In this video, we'll talk about one more type of trigonometric substitution problem. That's one that requires one additional step, namely completing the square, before you can get to the actual trigonometric sub component. So the issue with problems like this is you get an expression that's under a square root, but it doesn't look like x squared minus a squared, or x squared plus a squared, or any of those forms that you can use trigonometric substitution on. However, any quadratic that's under a square root or any form can be written in that form by completing the square. And I have the weird plus minus here because it could be positive, it could be negative, it could be any of those things, depends on what the coefficients are in this problem. But the point is, I can convert any quadratic into a form that matches my trig sub formulation by completing the square. An example of that to think about it at first is something like x squared plus 2x plus 2. That's a quadratic. But there's no easy way to use trig sub at this point because I don't really have it in the right form to deal with it. Well, what can I do? Well, I can rewrite this as x squared plus 2x plus 1 plus 1. And now this here is a perfect square. So this is the square root of x plus 1 squared plus 1. And how would I use trig sub to solve that one? Well, the point is, I want this term to become tangent squared of theta, because then tangent squared plus 1 goes to secant squared, and things work out nicely. So I would need to make my trig sub be that x plus 1 equals tangent theta. So not just x, but x plus 1 here. That will let me make the solution that I need to get to the right expression that will simplify out to get my answer. I just have to be wary of that when I go back to doing the solving back in terms of x to make sure I use this as my expression and not just tangent theta, right? It's a different expression, so your triangle is going to look differently, but the ideas are still the same. Figure out what needs to be the trig function to make this work out, set that as your trig substitution, and then when you work back at the end, make sure you take that into account when you're solving for what the expression should be in terms of x and not in terms of theta. It's an example that's worked out so you can see what this stuff sort of looks like. So we want to evaluate this integral, dx over root x squared plus 4x plus 1. So it's a quadratic on the bottom of the square root. So inside the square root makes me think, oh, this should be trig sub, but I don't see something in the right form there that I can actually deal with. So I need to make this a perfect square. So the way you generally do that, right, you take this middle coefficient here, you take 4, you divide it by 2, you get 2, you then square that and you get 4. That means that the thing I need to add is I need to have a plus 4 to make it a perfect square, right? It's b over 2 squared needs to be c to make it a perfect square. So I can rewrite this expression as an integral of dx over square root x squared plus 4x plus 4, and then minus 3 makes it still be a plus 1 down there. Or you can do it differently, write this as minus 4 plus 1, but you'll get the 3 at the end anyway. So this is integral dx over root x plus 2 quantity squared minus 3. Now I want to solve this integral here via trigonometric substitution. So the fact that I see variable squared minus a squared means we're in secant territory. So I should use a secant for my substitution, and namely I want square root of 3 secant theta to be my substitution, because I have a 3 there, so it should be square root of 3. But to make it work, this needs to be x plus 2. Because the linear shift, we still have that dx is root 3 secant theta tangent theta, d theta, and then I can make that substitution. Integral the dx is root 3 secant theta tangent theta d theta. For the bottom, x plus 2 squared becomes 3 secant squared theta minus 3. This here becomes a 3 tangent squared theta. So I get integral of root 3 secant theta tangent theta d theta divided by root 3 tangent theta. Root 3 is canceled, tangent theta is canceled, I'm left with just secant, which we have a formula for. That's just log of secant theta plus tangent theta plus c. Now I have to convert this back into x's. 
And to do this, we again want a triangle. But what was our substitution? Our substitution was that x plus 2 was root 3 secant theta. So what this means is secant theta is x plus 2 over root 3, and secant is hypotenuse over adjacent. So I should have hypotenuse being x plus 2, adjacent being root 3, and this opposite side here is going to be square root of x plus 2 squared minus 3, which is what it should be because that was the expression in my original problem. So now I can just find my answer by figuring out what secant and tangent are. So this should be log of secant, which is again h over a, so x plus 2 over root 3, plus tangent, which is opposite over adjacent, so square root of x plus 2 squared minus 3 over root 3 plus c. So that's how you work the ones with completing the square as well. The important thing to make sure of is that you a complete the square correctly to get you to an expression that looks like you could use trig sub on it, and then you're careful with how you actually do the substitution. Right? You want to make sure you have the right term substituted out to give you the right trigonometric cancellation. And then when you go back to x, you have to be careful with your triangle to make sure you actually put the correct variables in the right spot to make sure you get the right formulas back, right? Because you're, you're not plugging in x anymore, you're plugging in some shift of x, which is what you needed to do the trig sub in the first place. So as long as you do that all correctly, you'll be able to solve out these problems well by completing the square first, and then solving a trig sub problem like normal with a shifted value of x.